Hi, I'm Candace, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make sewing and DIY videos, and today I'm gonna show you how to make these adorable yarn embroidered sweaters. These make such a great gift, and we're coming up on the holiday season, so I thought I would do an updated tutorial on how to make these. So let's get started. Here are the supplies you'll need. You'll need a water-soluble fabric marker, a darning needle, some snips, and some yarn. These are my favorite water-soluble fabric markers to use. They're by Adger, and I get them on Amazon. The darning needles that I have are from Clover. I got them in this little set and I use the largest size. It has a really big eye and a blunt end. These are just my sewing thread snips. And this is the yarn that I'm using. It's by Lion Brand and it's the Heartland yarn. It's a medium weight yarn, it's size four. It's really up to you how thick the yarn is. I used bulky yarn last time and I found it a bit too bulky, so went with a smaller weight this time. Just make sure to check that label to see if you can wash the yarn if you're planning on washing your sweater and definitely steer clear of 100% wool because that will felt if you wash your sweater in the washing machine. And lastly, you'll need your sweater. I have one from Zara here. I would have thrifted one, but I wanted matching ones for my sons, so I bought these new. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find a font that I like. I actually usually just freehand it, but if you wanna have like a template to follow, I like to use defont.com. It has tons of free fonts that you can use. So here's what the website looks like. I just go over to script and to calligraphy and there are 222 pages of calligraphy you can choose from. I like to choose one that has more open space and is kind of rounder because it looks better when you stitch it up. If you have something that's too close together and hard to read, it's not gonna be easy to read on your sweater either. I think I am gonna go with this one and then you can type in your name for a preview. And since I don't have an app that I can open text on in here with like a font, what I do is I just zoom in a little bit and then I take a screenshot. Then I can open that up and zoom in on it till it's a size that I like. And then I will put my sweater over top and trace it. Brightness is all the way up. And then you're just gonna put your iPad right inside your sweater so that you can trace on top of it. I just moved to a darker room so it was a bit easier to see the screen and then you'll just trace your letters. I didn't follow this exactly because I didn't like the way the T's were, but I just used it as a rough sort of guide. Next, we'll grab our yarn. I start with about 20 inches and I cut it as I go. It helps to roll the yarn between your fingers a little bit so that it makes it easier to get through the eye of the needle. And then you wanna make sure you leave quite a long tail just so that you don't lose it as you're stitching. I find it easiest to have my stitches going away from me as I work, so I'm just gonna flip my sweater upside down. And we're gonna start with the top of the W. And to start stitching, you're gonna bring your needle from the inside of the sweater to the outside, and you're gonna pull almost all the yarn through, leaving yourself just a few inches to weave in at the end later. You can knot this if you want, but depending on the weave of your sweater, it may pull through the front, so you will have to weave in the ends regardless. And next, we're gonna take our needle and re-enter right next to where we just came out of. Then we're gonna bring our needle back out to the front of the sweater at the length that we want the stitch to be. My stitches are just under a centimeter long. And with your needle still like this, you're gonna take your working yarn, which is the one that is not the tail, and wrap it around the front of the needle from left to right. And then you're gonna pull the yarn all the way through, and this is gonna create your first stitch. Make sure not to pull too tight on this stitch as it will create puckers in your sweater if you do this. So just keep it nice and taut, but not too tight. To create the second stitch, you're gonna re-enter where you just came out of for the first stitch, and then bring the needle to the front at the length that you want the stitch. So about a centimeter again, and then take your working yarn, wrap it left to right in front of the needle, and pull your yarn taut. Some yarns can be quite twisty and when you pull your stitch tight, it might look a little funny and need a little bit of readjusting, but you can just pull on that stitch a little bit just to straighten it out and then just re-tighten your stitch. And now that you know how to create your stitches, you're just gonna keep continue doing that and following your traced outline. So I finished the first curve of the W, and to do the second one, I don't wanna have another line of stitching beside the middle line here as it's gonna to look too bulky. 
So I'm just gonna finish off this stitch by re-entering right above the stitch and bring the needle to the inside of the sweater. This is how you can finish off all of your letters, just bring your yarn back to the inside. And then I'm gonna bring the needle back out in the middle of one of the stitches in the W where I want to start the second curve of the W. So this is kind of like starting a new line of stitching. So I'm just bringing the needle back right beside where I just came out and creating a new stitch to start the second curve of the W. And you can see it looks a lot cleaner and neater when you do it this way. The stitching just follows the curve of the letter nicely and looks really clean. Now that I'm done my first letter, I'm just going to trim the yarn and leave a few inches on the inside to weave in later. And now we're just gonna continue stitching the rest of the letters. For certain letters, if you're doing cursive, you may have parts that cross over or underneath each other. For this letter, I'm gonna show you how to go underneath a line of stitching. For this last part of the Y, I'm gonna create my stitch and make sure it ends right next to where the tail of the Y is. For letters like these that overlap, you wanna make sure that you get your stitch as close as possible because if you don't, you'll have a weird little gap that's left. So I've created my stitch right next to that tail of the Y and now I'm gonna take my needle and bring it underneath the tail and back up through the sweater right beside the tail. And then I'm gonna bring the needle back in right beside where I just came out and create a new stitch. So that's how you bring your stitches underneath a line of stitching. To do stitching on top, like crossing your T's, it is really simple. You'll just stitch right across them like your normal stitches. So here I am just finishing off crossing my T's and we are almost done. The last thing to do is weave in our ends. So I've turned my sweater inside out and I'm adding a couple double knots at the ends of my yarn just as a backup. But then I'm going to take my darning needle and just weave in all of those ends. So you'll just thread your needle with the ends and then weave in and out of the stitches that you created. And this should keep your yarn nice and secure even through the washing machine. If you have a crochet hook, I find that this is a lot faster than using the needle. I'm using a size four hook here, but you'll just insert your hook behind the stitches and just weave your yarn in and out. And the last finishing touches are just to clip all of your yarn tails, and then you're gonna spray your sweater with some water to get rid of that water-soluble fabric marker, and you'll be done. So that's it for the tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me. And if you make a sweater, definitely tag me on Instagram. I want to see it. You can find me there at so Bake Make. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll be back with a new video soon.